So, all right, y'all can have a seat. We're going to get into some God Speaks this morning. Um, I want to say thank y'all. Glad y'all are here. Glad y'all came back. Some of you. Might be your first. I don't know if it's anybody's first time, but if it's your first time, you don't know what we're about to do. We're just going to welcome everybody. Ready? One, two, three. That means welcome. You can use it for amen. We will use it for goodbye in a little bit. So, uh... Anyway, we have been talking all month about God Speaks, and I've been trying to roll this out piece by piece, and yet this, today's message is the message I've been working on ever since we started this, this, this topic, all right? God Speaks. The first message I preached was God speaks, speaks just because He does. God Speaks. You know, uh, we talked about creation being the voice of God um, that, that really speaks of his majesty, his power, his design, and that, you know, we as the created beings really don't have an excuse. God spoke. We acknowledge that there is a God because of the, that voice. Second thing I, I, I talked about was God speaks wherever. Wherever we are, God speaks. The question is, are we close enough to hear Him, or are we paying attention to Him? Are we listening? We can hear God and not be listening. Uh, God can be speaking, but we're not in the frame of hearing Him speak. But God speaks, and then today I titled this one, God Speaks His Heart to Our Ear, because uh, Jesus says, and you see it throughout Scripture, it says, having an ear to hear, let him hear. So God speaks, we just need an ear to hear. Now, I know as a baby, I heard my mother speak. But lying in that crib, I had no understanding of what she was saying, right? I just knew I heard her voice, I saw her smile, I saw her face. I, I knew that mom was talking to me, but there was no conscious awareness of what she was saying. For instance, I can imagine my mom would have said, don't you mess up that diaper. <laughs> right? So consciously I could have said, okay, then I'm going to scream when it's time for you to do something about it. Right? No conscious awareness. Diaper gets messed. There you go. Uh, truth is, I believe God speaks to all mankind. Sometimes we hear and disregard. Okay? So as we consider this this morning, I want to share with you what is... People have left this morning in three worship gatherings disagreeing with me, and I, that's fine. There is enough conversation on multiple levels of this topic that, guess what? There is obviously not universal agreement in the body of Christ about how we hear the voice of God. All right? So, here's what I want to start out with this. This is probably where I failed earlier, uh, is to tell you. I happen to believe that we are made up of three parts. Okay? I believe that there's a body, there's a soul, reason, emotion, logic, mind, intellect, all those things. And then there's a spirit, that, that place of being, and that place that, that is, is basically non-functioning until God wakes us up. All right? That's what I believe. You don't have to believe that if you don't want to. But if you don't, then there's some things you have to deal with in Scripture. So here you go. In Matthew 13, verses 14 and 15, I shared this with you last week, Isaiah, Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, You will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous, their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn back, and I would heal them. 25 years ago, I read a book called The Breaking of the Outer Man and the Release of the Holy Spirit. It's a book by Watchman Nee, except that Watchman Nee never wrote a book. Okay? Watchman Nee wrote down his devotional thoughts as he spent time with God. And after he died, editors compiled his thoughts into books on certain subjects that he wrote about. All right? So he wrote this book, The Breaking of the Outer Man, The Release of the Spirit. And in that book, he describes the outer man, the inner man, and the innermost man. And I haven't read that book since then, but, but I, it resonated with me. The outer man being the physical, the inner man being the soul, the innermost man being the spirit. 
Now what it, what Watchman Nee says is the spirit is unable to speak transparently and truthfully unless the outer man and the innermost man in these words are broken away. Those things have to be broken before the spirit and the place of the spirit of God in us can speak. All right? So I believe in what is referred to as tripartite man, the trichotomy of man, that man is three parts. Equal voices out there that believe in a dichotomy man, that there are only two parts, the physical and the non-physical. And somehow in the soul, the, the non-physical personality, that is where the spirit would abide and, and, and that. So uh, depending on where you fall in this, you're either going to agree with me or disagree with me. We're not going to argue. We're not going to fight. Uh, God speaks, but we better be listening. Here you go. Not to me. Listen to God. Here you go. All right. So in Hebrews 4.12, look at this verse, this uh, one verse. For the word of God, the word of God, that's the logos. The logos is interpreted a number of ways in Scripture. But it is overwhelmingly understood as that which has been said or communicated. So, the Logos is the revelation of God. God reveals His Word, His intent, His, His desire, plan, and purpose for His creation and individually for us. All right? So, for the Word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword penetrating as far as, listen to this now, as far as the separation of soul and spirit joints and marrow okay joints and marrow being physical spiritual soul in the middle there all right i'm putting soul in the middle for a reason it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart the word judges the thoughts and intentions the communication of god is what the logos is all right here you go uh first point we are called now here you go ready I'm going to use Ted. I'll go, Ted! Ted, you hear me? He heard me. I called Ted. Ted heard me. What does Ted get to do now? He gets to decide whether he's going to respond to that call, right? All right. So I can call Ted, and Ted can go, <whistles> and ignore me, right? Or if I go over to the beach... And scream Ted's name. Does he have an out? Yeah, I'm too far away. The truth is, if that's where I am, he's too far away, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, but there you go. So here you go. Here's the, here's the understanding. God calls us. He calls to all of his creation. He would that none should perish. Okay? So he calls. Now listen to this in 1 Thessalonians 5. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May your whole what? Spirit, soul, body be kept sound and blameless. Now, that is what sanctification is. God takes the whole being and separates, sets apart from... Sin, death, all that kind of stuff. May the peace of may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful; He will do it. Where did you hear God call? Okay, now here you go. You're hearing right now as I read. You're hearing the Word of God. Okay, you're hearing it. Right. You take that, the Word of God physically speaks into your soul. All right, so, so in the body, we have seeing, we have hearing, we have feeling, we have tasting, and it's 12 o'clock. So anyway, sorry, that was a distraction. And we have smelling, right? Those are senses. Those were birthed and woke up when you were born. You know, babies can smell, babies can see, they can't see well. You know, I, I remember the first time somebody told me, he said, you know, uh, don't think that your baby can see you from across the room. 
Because their eyes haven't developed to the point to discern and distinguish particulars. You know? However, if you call to your child from across the room, that baby knows your voice. See? So certain senses are already developed. Certain things are... are and guess what? I saw Eli spit out some, uh, some of that, that, that squashed up squash plenty of times. His sense of taste was already developed. He didn't like it. Butternut squash. I never, that orangey stuff, you can't get it out of a bib either. Anyway, that sense of taste was already there, right? All right. So the physical senses speak into the soul. In the soul, we have reason and memory. We have imagination, we have emotion, we have affection. We have all of those intangible things that make our personality, right? So the, the physical speaks into the soul, and we decide what to do with it, okay? All right. Um, if your physical, all these senses are awakened at birth. Let's say you accept Jesus at 12. All right? God, by Holy Spirit, comes in and awakens the Spirit within you. Okay? And begins to speak into your spirit. All right, so let me, let me do this like I did earlier. All right, here we got body, physical senses, physical appearance, all that sort of thing, speaking into the soul. On the other side, we got the Spirit... Awakened by Holy Spirit with spiritual senses. Okay? So if you're a baby Christian, your physical senses already have a head start on your spiritual senses. They're 12 years older than these. You know what the loudest voice of the three? The physical. Over here in the physical body, the body's going, You're hungry! And in the soul, in our mind, in our reason, we go, I'm going to eat. Right? Over here in the body, there are other physical drives that, that drive us. I'm not going to get into the details. You who know, know. All right. They say, ha! Ah! And over here in the mind, we go, that's what I'm going to do. And so, in the unspiritual man, it is physical and soulishness that determines that identity. Okay? We let the physical say, well, this is who you are. You know? This is your drive. That's who you are. This is your pleasure. That's who you are. This is your entertainment. Well, that's who you are. And the Spirit in Christ, God is waking us up and going, no. That's not who you are. This is who you are. The body is the loudest. The soul is the second loudest. It's not quite as loud as the body, but that's the one where we go, wait a minute. Spirit is the quiet. That's the still, small voice of God that you have to pay attention. You have to quieten the other two to hear the voice of God. Okay? So, God called. Where do you hear God's call? You hear God's call. You, you understand that God's calling, and you respond to God, all right? Wait a minute. God loves me? God, God, God died for me? See? Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Those folks that are, are, and I'll go ahead and tell you who they are. Some of you don't even know, but I'll tell you. Those of a Reformed theology, they disagree with three parts. They, there's only two. Okay? Just go ahead, go ahead and tell you that. So, so, here you go. Somewhere I'm going, I need to pay attention to that that God is saying. And God says, okay, fine. Wake up. I'm pouring my spirit into you, saving you, redeeming you. We begin the sanctification, the regeneration, the, the redeeming process of drawing you close to me. Pay attention. Listen, here goes. All right? So, God is speaking into the spirit the revelation of God to give us identity in the soul where we say, I am God's child. I am not a child of my culture, not a child of my, my wants and desires, my uh, pleasures. I am a child of God. 
That is my identity. What's cool about the gathering these days is, is of course, we've had a pastoral changeover. Um, Pastor John's right there. Pastor Nick's somewhere around here. Pastor Scott's back yonder. Um, so, and, and, and they all have titles. Community, family ministries, congregational care. I get to be shepherding. Got two other part-time that are pastoral staff that are high school and youth minutes, high school and middle school ministry. So that's all cool. But we sit around during the week and we answer questions. Well, we ask questions first, then we try to answer questions. So here we go. Over the course, now, we've been for 10 years gathering well, right? 10 years ago I came here and we, we created an atmosphere of worship and celebration and gathering. And people have come. That's why... Um, we do four gatherings every Sunday morning because we can't get them all in here, right? Well, not as intentionally, but very, you know, sort of caringly. Some of the folks who gather have gotten involved in, in other groups. For instance, they'll get involved in, in the women's group, the ladies' gathering or the men's gathering, or they get involved in Christian surfers or sea salt or something. And so, so yes, they're a part of the big gathering, but they get involved in other smaller gatherings and even some gatherings that don't have names. They just get together and, and, and they're, they're sort of that subset gathering. They get together for a purpose and a reason. But we haven't been very intentional about that. And then what we need, though, in the body of Christ, and this is what Jesus did this, y'all. Jesus met with three. Actually, on the beach, he met with one. There's one tagging along behind, but here you go. We meet in smaller groups to do Jesus together, to do the walk together. So what we're creating is this, this, this sort of process, this road, this path for the journey, a path for the journey. Here we go. First step, who am I? Who am I? Well, that, let's let the Spirit speak into the soul to give me identity. Who am I? Yeah, I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. There you go. Identity. Paul said it first. I'm just copying it. That's Galatians 2.20 for those of you who are writing it down. All right. Um, second question. Why? If this is who I am, why am I here? Who am I? Why am I? Right? Why gives us purpose. This is the meaning of life. You want to know what philosophy is asking? What's the meaning of life? Well, there it is. Why? Third question. <laughs> what now? <laughs> if I know who I am, if I know why I am, then those two things give direction into how and what I do, how I behave, how I live out my purpose and my identity in Christ. So you see, when you start to deal with this, this threefold person, body speaking in the soul, spirit speaking in the soul, where is it that God's communicating? Where are you going to hear the voice of God? You see? Where is it God's going to give direction? Over there. Is the world giving you direction? Over there. Is Satan trying to direct you? Over there. Okay? All right. Where do we respond to God? Now, this is one. This is just sort of an example, an illustration. Mary, you know, being a nice little teenage girl uh, at her house, you know, angel shows up and says, Blessed are you, Mary. You're going to give birth to Jesus. You're going to give birth to God who saves, Yeshua. Okay? Once the angel leaves, Mary starts singing. Right? Right? Uh, we know it as the Magnificat. I don't know why we know it as that, but that's what we know it as. It's in Luke chapter 1, verses... The, I just want you to see these two verses. And Mary said, this is verse 46, My soul praises the greatness of the Lord. All right? Let's go back to our three parts. Ready? My soul praises the greatness of the Lord. Right? All right, so, maybe you're a very... Um, let's say, physical praiser, okay? Um, so if your soul is praising God over here in the body, maybe your hands are in the air. Or I scare some people. I like to kind of dance. There's some songs we do that you can do the electric slide to, but I don't dare, right? You know? Physically, I'm praising God. David did it with no clothes on. All right? I'm just saying. All right, so my soul... 
praises the greatness of God. What, how do we know the greatness of God? We know the greatness of God because God reveals His greatness to us spiritually. So Mary says, my soul praises the greatness of God. I am currently, this is a present tense Greek word, my soul praises the greatness of God. And my spirit, now this is an heiress perfect, ready? My spirit has praised and is praising. So she learned something in her spirit that resulted in her spirit praising and her soul praising. So the spirit spoke into the soul and then spoke out into the body. Maybe she threw her hands up. Maybe she, she obviously sang, right? So it all got put together there. So, so, so when you read that, you start to realize, wait a minute, God is moving her in the right direction, right? Okay. So here's the question that we all have to rise to. God speaks. Are you listening? Uh, well, no. God speaks. Are you hearing? See, Angie's here. She's in the back back there. I hear a lot of things. I don't listen to half of it. Can I just confess that? I've been confessing it for weeks for every husband in the room. Okay? We hear, we just don't listen. You know, my dad, um, my mom took my dad to get his ears checked. They found out he hears fine. He just doesn't listen. Right? Can I just tell y'all that made my mom angrier? <laughs> All right. So God speaks. We hear, but we're not paying attention. That goes back to what, what uh, was said in Isaiah. You will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never perceive, for this people's heart has grown callous. If you look at the other Hebrews passage, you find out where it says you can't hear because you're, you're too immature. You're not paying attention. How many of you know kids that don't pay attention? Yeah. See? How many of you know adult? Oh, never mind, I ain't going there. It's real funny, this, this whole topic of God speaks that I've been spending time on the last few weeks <clears throat> is easy to identify with, but this is the message that I've been working on for three weeks. This is the message where, guess what? We all know we want to hear God speak. If you're in Christ, you want to hear God speak. We all know that wanting to hear God speak is not always easy. There's a lot of noise coming out of the world. There's a lot of noise coming out of me. Y'all can attest to that. Uh, but, but there are a lot of things that are distractions to us. My wants, my desires, my this, my that. And the Spirit's going, that's not good for you. That's not really what you want. You see? We all know that. So, so we're hearing, we're not listening. We're hearing, but we're not close enough to God to hear what He's saying. Or we're just too immature to understand and perceive his desire, His will for us, His plan for our lives, all right? It's funny, um, I, I told this joke all, all the morning, so i got to tell it now, too, or y'all miss out. Um, I think it's safe to say, if you want to understand and perceive what God desires for you, you have to pay attention. You have to understand what's being said to you, Okay? To you, all right? Um, old Mr. Norton went to the doctor, 82 years old. Doctor said, Norton, you're, you're pretty good for 82. Did his checkup and sent him on his way. A few days later, he was driving down the road, saw Norton coming up the sidewalk. Norton had this beautiful woman on his arm. Had this big old smile on his face. Next time Norton came into the doctor's office, he said, Norton, man, you're doing great. Unbelievable. Said, uh, what's going on? He said, Doc, I'm just doing what you told me to do. He said, what did I tell you to do? He said, you told me to get a hot mama and, and be cheerful. Doc said, Norton, that's not what I said. I said, you got a heart murmur. Be careful.
Perception is a little bit of everything, right? All right, so we hear God. We, we respond. God speaks. God calls. We, we hear. We respond. What does the response look like? See, going back to that Hebrews passage, I want, to, I want to touch on this a minute. The Word of God, the communication of God, the revelation of God is living and effective. A living and effective, sharper than any sword, double-edged, <clears throat> penetrating as far as separating the soul from the spirit and the body. Okay? So somewhere in the center of our being... Uh, God is attempting to communicate, all right, which one are you going to listen to? Okay, we have a culture that listens over here. We have a God who calls us to listen over here, okay? Now, here's your homework, y'all ready? Nobody counted on homework, but here you go. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 9. Paul writes, but as it is written. Now listen to all these references to senses. You ready? What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no human heart has conceived. God has prepared these things for those who love him. One of the gathering in the words this week was this. God speaks in relationship. What is that relationship? God is God to all of creation. But some of creation has responded to love Him back. Okay? God has prepared these things for those who love Him. Now God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit. Since the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. Okay? For who knows the person's thoughts? Yep, Colin's looking for There you go. Depths of God. There you go, next verse. For who knows a person's thoughts except his spirit within him? Folks, you don't know my thoughts within me. Soulishness, reason, mind, awareness, consciousness, emotion, affection, all those things. I know my thoughts. You don't know them unless I spit them out. Okay? Who knows the thoughts of a man except his spirit within him. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Now, we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who comes from God, so that we may understand what has been freely given to us by God. We also speak these things, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. So Paul's word, right? Explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. This is God's revelation of himself to us. Okay? But the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's Spirit. Okay? Okay? Because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. Here you go. There are a lot of people whose identity is all in their soulish behavior. Their soulish consciousness, awareness, education, intellect, affection, emotion, mind. All those things. And that's where their identity comes from and that's all they hear. Okay? Okay. That's just where they are. And over here in the world, in the body, they hear somebody say, God is love. God came to earth in the form of a baby, died on the cross because of his incredible, um, overwhelming love for you, unconditional love for you. And in their mind, they say, oh, that's ridiculous. That's a crutch. That's, grandma's religion and yet their spirits over there going wait a minute there's something to that there's something going on over yonder that you need to be paying attention to and so our spirits going listen and then we respond and we go you know what that sounds like what I've been looking for all my life I want Jesus and God says yes 
An awakened spirit, Holy Spirit comes in, fills us up, begins that talking, that communicating, that empowering, that gifting, that walk, that encouragement, all that stuff. And, and, and so then spirit begins to speak into soulishness and we go, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. There you go, I am crucified. I have crucified the self. I have crucified the flesh. I have crucified all that stuff so that no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You see that? That is identity. That is who am I? And out of who am I, why am I here? To glorify God. To be salt and light to a world that's dead and tasteless. Darkness. Okay. Y'all know what? Y'all aren't the biggest gathering, but y'all are getting the best explanation. <sighs> Spiritual person, however, can evaluate everything. And yet he himself cannot be evaluated by anyone. See, that's a caution of judging another person's walk with God. For who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. For my part, brothers and sisters, I was not able to speak to you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as babies in Christ. Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, I tried to tell you spiritual things, but I couldn't give you stake because you were still on the bottle. I know people who are on the bottle. I know believers, Christians, who are still babies in their faith. They've gotten stuck somewhere in their maturing process. You know what's funny is, 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 is this whole concept of three-part man is, is referred to as tripartite. I stole that from Michael Fletcher. However, you can Google it. And come up with a whole bunch of web page stuff on tripartite man. T-R-I-P-A-R-T-I-T-E. Tripartite man. A man is a trichotomy. God. Father, Son, Holy. Amazing there's a reflection there. Right? Three person God. Three part man. All right? Tripartite man. But there are those who are going to argue the two part man. The dichotomy. Physical, non-physical. All right? Can I just go ahead and tell you all this? I'm not going to argue with you. All right? I don't think God gave us a, 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 an understanding in which he wanted us to argue about things. Okay? God speaks. Are you paying attention? Are you listening? Are you responding? That's the whole answer to the question. Responding to the voice of God. That's what 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through, through chapter 3, verse 1. I want you to read that this week. Go read 2, 9 through 3, 1, 1 Corinthians. Read it at least three times this week. We're going to break this down a little more next week. I wanted to finish this today, but I've been studying it for three weeks, so there's no way to get it all out in one week, all right? We're going to come back to this next week. John's, already, if John's preaching Wednesday night, y'all. If you hadn't ever heard John preach, show up Wednesday night. He's preaching. All right, but here you go. He's going to follow on this. What, out of Ephesians? So he's going to follow on this out of Ephesians. So here you go, guys. This is the basics of this message in parts. Ready? God calls. Where do you hear God call? Right? Where do you respond? See, what speaks into your response? Third thing is... What do you do once you have responded to the call of God in your life? Folks, it starts with Jesus. I've been telling you this for weeks. You can't know God apart from knowing Jesus. I mean, you know, uh, Ravi Zacharias is the one that wrote the book, you know, uh, Jesus Among Other Gods. Something like that. I forget the title. But here's the point. Jesus himself said, you don't get to God except through me. Only one means of salvation, all right? So God calls, we respond, and then we live it. If you don't know Jesus, you need to know Jesus, all right? 
We're going to sing. Band's going to come up and lead us in one more song. We get to praise God together. We get to respond to God together. I'll be here. Pastor John will be over here. You respond. If God calls you down to pray with one of us, come on down and pray with one of us. All right? Uh, If he doesn't call you, don't worry about it. But if he calls you, you better step out. If you don't know Jesus, we won't tell you about Jesus. If you know him but you're not living for him, that's sin. You've got to have a conversation with him about that. Third thing is you can join the gathering today if you want to. This is the time. Let's stand. As, let's pray first. God, thank you for today. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you that you are a relational God. You have spoken in relationship. You have called us into relationship. You continue to lead in relationship. God, help us to hear your voice. God, help us to pay attention to your voice. God, help us to understand your voice. God, help us to live it out. Father, as we finish this worship gathering, we simply want to give this time to you. God, help us to respond to you. Help us to answer your call, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.